What's going on? It's Friday. It's hashtag Ask Lauren. So I got a question uh, from Nancy G on YouTube. She said, how did you start your career as a host? Did you take any particular college courses, internships to get into that field? Love your videos. Thanks. I didn't take any broadcasting courses in school. Um, basically my story, which I've probably explained before, is just that I grew up watching much music here in Canada and wanted to be a much music VJ. I was really shy growing up, not somebody that you would ever think would want to be in front of a camera. That was like when I was at school and around people, but when I was like by myself, I really felt like I had this energy or this, this Thing, this something that I had that I wanted to kind of get out there and I always go back to thinking about how when I was about not 10 years old I would shoot these videos with my um, my dad's cousin who was older and he had a video camera and he would come from Montreal to Toronto for the summer sometimes for a big family picnic and I would make him shoot videos of me and then sometimes I would include my sister but I would be like the host and producer of these video segments and they were shot on like a crappy camcorder and one was a house tour of our house and I was like this is the living room and I was like presenting and then another one was like kind of like a cooking show so it's really hilarious because that is obviously basically what I'm doing now uh, and that person like my real self was always in there and it took a long time to kind of chip away and kind of break down the walls and like come out of my shell but from the time I was in high school and I really felt like I wanted to work in the music industry, I had held this dream of I'm going to be a much music VJ in my mind from about grade 9 or 10 uh, all the way through high school. And I kind of had a backup plan of like, I'm going to work in the music industry, I'm going to work at a record label, I'm going to manage bands, do publicity, something like that, where I'll be surrounded by those kinds of people that I admire. Just in case I don't become a TV host, I'll work in the music industry. Um, so I did an internship at Sony Music in high school. I became quite ambitious. That's really when I came out of my shell, was in high school, uh, like grade 11 and 12. I felt like once I was out in the real world around people that were older, that were, had careers, I felt like more connected to that and I always just wanted a, a job, I wanted a career. Um, so I applied for Durham College Music Industry Business for post-secondary school, which I went to right out of grade 13. And I did that for two years. And during that time, I actually had an audition at YTV to be a host for the Saturday morning uh, block of shows or whatever. And that was my first experience ever auditioning, ever going out for any kind of television hosting thing. I never um, went out for auditions. I didn't know where to find them, but this YTV one came up, I think, just online. And I had been looking and I had applied for the VJ searches in the past here in Canada, but didn't get through, didn't get, um, didn't get looked at any further than just sending in that tape. So I went for this YTV audition and I got very, very close to getting it. It was between me and one girl and this was in my second year of college. And that let me know that, oh, I could actually do this. You know, somebody saw the thing that I know I have, somebody saw it when I went to that audition. So someone else will see that. And I just was confident in that thought. I was just like, someone else, will figure out that I'm meant to be on television and I don't need to do anything else. That's literally what I thought back then. Now this was before I believed in things like manifestation and the law of attraction and visualization. I was doing those things that I like practice and preach now very deliberately, but at the time I was doing it very unknowingly. I just had a lot of confidence <laughs> when I was younger. I'm not saying I don't have confidence now, but I do think it gets a little bit harder, but that's a whole other video. Okay, so I was just like, that's what I'm gonna do. So finished college in 2003 is when I graduated. So do the math. And I had an internship in college, but I didn't, um, I didn't like it. So I quit it and I went to go work and finish up my internship, but also get paid with this woman who actually was my manager when I did my internship in high school at Sony Music. This woman was now working at a non-for-profit, had nothing to do with the music industry really, but I became her event coordinator at a non-for-profit, helping organize and run events all across Canada, organize volunteer teams, as well as was involved in booking the talent and the music talent for these events across Canada. So it was a little dabble into the music industry, but it wasn't like a cool music industry job, but it was a job and I was getting paid. So I did that for about a year and a half. 
before going to work for another job that had nothing to do with television. I worked in sales at a printing company selling like printed product. Like we had printing presses in Montreal where the head office was and I would go meet with VPs and marketing managers and talk to them about their catalogs and their flyers and how they got them printed and what they needed and I would quote them prices and I would get orders and I was handed a lot of business. Uh, when I first started that job, they gave me a lot of accounts because I took over for somebody and I was really good at this job. Except I was like 22 or something crazy like that and had no clue what I was doing, but it was this personal interaction that I enjoyed about the job, the talking to people, like almost interviewing people. And little did I know that these two jobs that I didn't really like at the time, that could have very well been career style jobs for me that I could have done for a number of years, were really preparing me for my job as a TV host, my job as a VJ, which you don't know these things at the time, you only know them in hindsight. And so one of my biggest things that I always tell people is that you might have this dream job that you want, but you're not necessarily gonna get it right out the gate. Definitely visualize and definitely keep that dream alive and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do whatever it is you wanna do, cause you can. But you also need to take smaller steps to get there and you need to take on opportunity and you need to say yes to these job opportunities that come your way because they are stepping stones to you getting to where you want to go. They might not look like it at the time. They might seem like way off in left field, which these two jobs that I had were, but had I not have taken them and gained that experience and was in the right place at the right time, I never would have seen this posting for a host in Vancouver on the internet. It was a very simple posting. It said host, for 969 on MTV Canada. Uh, Vancouver-based lifestyle show for youth is looking for a host that's into music, pop culture, fashion, etc. Send in a demo tape. And that's what I did. I made a tape. At the time I was working for the sales company, on the weekend I shot something with my boyfriend. It was just me driving around in the car, me talking to the camera, telling them about myself. I had no hosting experience other than that one YTV show. And I was like, I knew the show that I was applying for as well. And I was like, they don't have anybody like me on that show. I'm going to get this job. Like I just knew, again, I don't know where this confidence come from that I seem to not really have anymore. But when I was younger, I would just say, this is what I want. This is what's going to happen. And it happened. And I feel like now that I've clouded my mind with like all of these practices and things to like do that I was already doing, I've like made it more complicated for myself to just be like, this is what I want. This is what I'm doing. So I feel like if you're younger, you're at a really big advantage because what do you have to lose? The world is your oyster. Go after every single thing that you want. And my main thing is do not let anyone tell you you otherwise. I've posted a video about this actually, about how you shouldn't listen to your parents or teachers when they tell you that the job that you want to do for the rest of your life is crazy or unrealistic or will never happen. Because had I have told people in high school that I wanted to be a much music VJ, they would have said, no way in flying F are you ever going to be a much music VJ? Because what are the odds of that happening? But I just knew. So I ended up getting my first job on that show, 969 on MTV Canada. I moved to Vancouver. When I went out for my camera test, they actually, um, I paid for my own flight, but they put me up in a hotel for one night and I did like a day and a half camera testing with one of the camera guys who I am friends with now and have continued to work with over the last nine, 10 years. And when I walked into that building for that audition, that camera test in Vancouver for that show, I just was like, I'm getting this job. I know I'm getting this job. I know this is the opportunity that I need to get my foot in the door because I didn't go to post-secondary school for television broadcasting because I knew I didn't need to. So I'm not saying that like you need to go to school for the thing that you want to do, but school as just something to do when you leave high school is important. Going to school to do something is important. It's at least putting yourself in motion. It's putting yourself in the direction of what you want, even if you go to school and you don't know what you want to do. So I don't say don't go to school, but I actually just went to McMaster University to talk to students about this exact thing a few days ago, which you may have heard me mention. And a lot of them were just like, saying, you know, they're already in a four year um, program at McMaster. Like I only did a two year college program, but these kids are in a four year university program. And then they're thinking because they took liberal arts and humanities and they didn't really specify, they're like, should I now go to Ryerson, you know, um, t you know, television broadcasting or go here and take television broadcasting because some of them wanted to work in television. And I was like, you could, but you've already spent almost four years in school. So to me, going to school really isn't going to help you at that point because you weren't, you're going to spend an eight, eight years in school before you even work in the industry. No. So even while you're in school though, you do need to be like seeking out opportunities in every minute of your spare time to put yourself 
in the environment that you want to eventually be in. When I was in high school, I was obsessed with bands and I would go meet them at Much Music and I would go talk to George Strombolopoulos at Edge 102 and I would like, you know, I was a fan and I just surrounded myself with people that I wanted to be like or whose lives I wanted to have when I was older. And it seemed like, well, who's this dork, you know? like. And not saying I got any connections through that stuff, because I didn't, but it let me feel like I was maybe already doing that job. It made me feel like one day I'm gonna also be at this building, one day I'm also gonna be doing this job. And that's something that Mike Dooley talks about in his books that I've recommended to you guys before, Infinite Possibilities, where he talks about the law of attraction and he just says, you need to you know, be, see, think, feel, smell, and taste what it is that you want before you get it. Even Abraham says this. It is really manifestation. I'm going into specifically manifestation right now because that's kind of what I talk about on my channel. I didn't really say manifestation when I went to make Master University the other day because I think practically when you're talking to like young people you do need like my main advice is like just do something so many people ask me like I want to work in PR or I want to work in the music industry or I want to be a tour manager with bands or I want to be a much music host or something like that and I just say well what are you doing now that's kind of like that and a lot of people go well nothing I don't know what to do what could I do it's all it's all stupid it's not what I want da 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 and even though my main point is, oh, you could just have a dream and manifest it. I mean, the steps of manifesting are, well, what are you doing right now to make it seem like you're living that dream? It might not be exactly like that, but it will make you at least feel or think that you're there or that you could visualize yourself there in the future. So it really is a little bit of doing and a little bit of sitting back and surrendering to the fact and trusting. Like I had this trust that I would just go be there, that I would just do that job, that I would just get that job, that I wouldn't have to go to school for it. I just knew that. I just somehow tapped in to like my life path, my, you know, path that the universe was like telling me really, really deeply inside, inside, inside. And I just listened and I knew. So it's a little bit of that, but if you're not doing anything right now to put yourself closer to what you want, then you're not doing anything and you're not helping. So, you know, I even said to these students the other day, it was like, you guys have YouTube. When I started in television, YouTube had just launched later after I had accepted that job. Social media wasn't a thing. I had just gotten Facebook. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing. There was not, there wasn't these easy connections that you can make with people online. And so if you want to be a TV host, what are you doing right now? to like make it seem like you're a TV host. Are you hosting videos on YouTube? That's what you should probably do. Um, because at least it's making you feel like you're a TV host of your own channel. Uh, and maybe no one's watching, but it doesn't matter. And so I think that you implementing and using social media to brand yourself is like one of the most important things you could do right now because it's readily available. There is no excuse to not be doing it. I think you need to be careful when you are posting on social media, depending on what you want to do for a living. Actually, no matter what you want to do for a living, you need to be careful about what you're doing on social media. And I think that you need to curate your social media accounts to be like that life you want or to showcase your talent. So if you're a graphic designer, if you're a comedian, if you're a writer, if you're any of these things, post on your social media accounts stuff like that create things you are creative in every capacity so put that stuff online and showcase it when someone asks you what do you want to do and if you do know and the answer is you know what i just said one of those examples then you want to be able to show that you're already doing it that you are that person you might not have the full-time paying all-star career job as a comedian as a writer as a tv host but you're already doing the job now and that's all you want to show <clears throat> yeah so nancy if you wanted to be a host if you're in high school i mean i would suggest applying for or a TV broadcasting program if you already kind of know that that's what you want to do. Um, yes, I didn't do that, but I do think it at least will set you up. It will give you a base foundation for the industry and for the things you need to know about the industry. And it puts you, like I said, in the direction of wanting to be that TV host. So definitely go to school, definitely go to post-secondary school, um, but just, just you know, know that you don't have to spend eight years in school unless you want to be a doctor or something like amazing being a doctor is much more important than being a tv host i'll just say that but 
I just, I didn't have that dream. Okay, so um, thank you for watching. Leave more hashtag ask more and questions in the comments below. We do this every Friday. Love your questions. Love talking to you. Follow uh, me on Twitter and Instagram. You can also ask me questions on those platforms too. And I'll see you guys Monday. Bye.